Hey viewers, welcome to Real Astrology once again and I'm here with Ans Wilhelm. Finally, I could invite him to my channel and he really honored me by being here. Thank you so much Ans for being here, please. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me and really everyone should know that we were talking the last 15 minutes and you already taught me a technique I didn't know. So thank you for spending some time with me. <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, that's really, you know, uh, so kind of you to say such big words for me. Thank you so much. And uh, you have been in this, uh, you know, Vedic astrology from years and you have designed this software, Carl. Tell me something about yourself, though you don't need an introduction, but still tell me something about your journey. Gosh, you know, I'm just an old athlete that fell in love with astrology. And, <laughs> you know, and I just put all my energy into it for now over... 25 years mm -hmm. um, with Vedic astrology and a few uh -huh. years before in Western astrology. And I still love it. You know, I still love it as much as when I first met her. So okay. <laughs> I keep going. Yeah. Sure. Somebody who, uh, you know, who's into it cannot leave it. It's so, uh, I will not say addictive, but it's like the passion, you know, that keeps yeah, you. Yeah. And when you have the passion, you're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've always had fun, you know, my whole life. I'm always into something, but I've, the only thing I stayed with was the astrology. Everything else gets boring, but astrology is such a big world to explore. You know, it's, it, there's no room for boredom. And definitely not. I, I agree with you. Uh, so Ernst, uh, I have a few questions. Uh, okay. Ask the kind of knowledge you have. Can you just tell me something about uh, Lajati Avastha that you keep uh, using? You know, you, I really okay. want to know. Yeah. Really, when it comes down to it, if I only could do one thing with astrology, it would be Lajitadi mm -hmm. I, I don't think, I really think it's the single most important technique we can use. And we can use them in so many different ways. We can use them for predictions. Mm -hmm. And we can also use them to examine a person. We can examine a person in their strategy of life. So somebody has an idea, this is the strategy that will work to get me what I want. Well, the good of us does show strategies that actually work on planet Earth. Okay. Right. And then when there's a bad Lajitani of us, it simply shows a strategy, an idea that this is the way to do something that simply won't work. And so they're very useful for helping people understand how their behaviors, the way they're trying to do something is actually not working. And we see that a lot. Um, but then we can go deeper than that. So on the very basic, we can predict. On a more, a little deeper level, we can say, okay, mm -hmm. you, um, you know, you're doing things in a way that works or don't work. Mm -hmm. Then we can go a little deeper than that and we can say, okay, you're an aspect of God that wants to flourish here on earth as yourself and you want to be healthy and full of life and invigorating, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're not. Why? And the reason is because we have, we literally have bad habits that keep us, that hold ourselves back. You know, we all have this life inside of us that wants to express itself. Mm -hmm. If it expresses itself successfully, we leave earth with peace. Mm -hmm. um, we, most people don't express it successfully. And the reason they don't is because we literally have bad habits that are saying when there's an opportunity or when there's a, an opportunity or a challenge or an inspiration or something to express who we really are, to live as ourselves, we have a bad habit of not doing it, mm. okay? For instance, a person might, you know, just have an, uh, an idea that they can't succeed, for instance, okay? Mm -hmm. So when their life wants to express, something says you can't succeed and they stop, okay? Mm -hmm. Or they want to become something, they feel the life in them wants to be something or do something, and the part of them will think, you know, no one will like me if I do that. And so they won't do it. So we literally have these mechanisms, these bad habits mm -hmm. that don't support who we are. They're these ideas, they're, they're wrong ideas about ourselves. And so we try to run our lives based on these ideas, many of which of them have nothing to do with the life inside of us. Mm -hmm. And then we get disease. Right. And exactly what planet we're getting stuck on mm -hmm. um, 
is shown with the Lajitani Vashti. So literally we can say these are the habits that are allowing you to live as yourself. Mm -hmm. These are the habits that are holding you back. Okay. Okay. So for instance, real simply, sometimes a person has to, you know, push against things in the world. You know, sometimes the world says you can't do that, right? Or a parent says you can't do that, or the spouse or a friend or someone says, no, don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Or your religion or your culture. But the life in you says, this is what I have to be. This is what I need to feel. This is what I, what I need to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And then instead of following that energy, we might not because someone confronts us and says, nope, you're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we listen to that. And we don't do it. So it's a simply, it's a bad habit mm -hmm. of not fighting for our right to exist as ourselves. Right. And there's all these stages of that life that it wants to express. Like the sun is the first stage and mm -hmm. it's simply the stage of this is the life that I'm here to express. Mm -hmm. Does a person actually have a confidence to be in touch with that or in the habit of ignoring that completely? Okay. Mm -hmm. And from there on, the, the energy progresses towards fulfillment and it wants to get to Saturn, mm -hmm. which is the most beautiful planet when you look up it in the sky. Mm -hmm. And that's the final stage where the life says, okay, I've gotten what I needed. I've had the experience. I'm ready to move on with peace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's this whole sequence of events that happen. When we get to the Mars stage, that's when we have to fight for the right to live as ourselves. Okay. But some people are in the habit of not fighting for their right to live for themselves. Or some people are in the habit of being scared of loss and mm -hmm. being scared of ending. So they'll cling on to things that are not serving them well anymore. Mm -hmm. if, and that would be like a bad logitati with Saturn. So it's very specific, but the idea I'm trying to convey is yeah. the energy in us, the life in us, that's the spirit of God. That's, what our, that's our soul manifesting into this world. Okay. Yeah. And we stop it all the time and we get aches and pains and diseases and this and that mm -hmm. simply because we're not allowing the life force to flow. Mm -hmm. And we do that because we have bad habits. We, we, we hold ourselves back. And the Lajitani Vashas will show us exactly where we're getting stuck. Okay. Wow. Okay. Then we can go a little deeper than that, and we can look at the Lajitani Vashas to see um, where we have our psychological wounds. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, a person might feel that they're always going to get betrayed. Someone, mm -hmm. Someone's always going to cheat me. So what do they do to make up for it? They try to control things. Mm -hmm. And then the people that are around don't like being controlled, so they betray them and leave or do something, right? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And so we have these wounds that when we follow the theme of the wound, we always end up with what we were trying to avoid. Mm. All right. So, and there's five of those wounds, okay? And um, they all relate to some of the bad avashtas, the lajitadi avashtas. Mm -hmm. So we can understand what the wounds are and how a person is, exactly what planet that wound is um, evolving around. Yeah. So we can work on a very deep psychological like remedial, level. Remedial uh, measure, you know, that is how you uh, predict about the remedies. Like, okay, you Yeah, know. you can use remedies, but you have to, when it comes down to it, you got to go really deep into yourself psychologically. Mm. You know, most of um, what people call the spiritual battle is really a psychological battle. Okay. And we literally have, you know, as part of the spiritual battle, <clears throat> we're just trying to bring the energy up our spine into our consciousness, right? Right. Hmm. That's what we're trying to do. But literally, we have these psychological anchors that are pulling it all down into the three lower chakras, you know? Right. And by, yes, by meditating, we're pulling this up. And mm -hmm. then we have all these psychological weights pulling it back down. So if we work on untying those psychological weights, mm. then the energy naturally just wants to go up anyway. Absolutely. So a lot of work can be done by working things out on the psychological level. And nothing compares to the Lajitadi Vashtas for doing that. Lajitadi Vashtas, yes. two other things. One thing is that um, you can see how people are going to impact you. Are they going to be fulfilling influences? 
-hmm. Are they going to be influences that make you feel starved and unhappy or agitated? You can see how different people, like the Jupiter's Your Man video on my YouTube channel is about the Avastas, the planets mm -hmm. uh, of Jupiter. Okay. Um, and as a result, if you have a Jupiter this way, that's what you're going to get from that outside person. So you can see what other people will end up doing to you. Okay. Okay. So you, there's so many ways to use these things. Mm -hmm. Now, the important thing about, there's five of us Okay. Mm -hmm. In astrology. There's the deep tadis and the laji tadis and da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Okay. The laji tadi of ashtas have to do with the air element. All right. Now the air element has the responsibility of shaking, moving, and displacing things. Okay. It's the only element that's changeable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why in the uh, Mahabharata, you know, Arjuna's brother that represents the air element. Um, right. What is it? Bhishma, right? Uh -huh. Or Bhima. 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 Bhima right? mm -hmm. So he actually symbolizes the air element. Mm -hmm. So who you're going to call when you need help? Him, right? Mm -hmm. He's the one that makes the changes. Yeah. And of course, in Lord, in, in the Ramayana, we've got. Hanuman does everything, right? Right. The air the the yeah. <laughs> right. So he's the air element. See, it's only the air element that can change things. Hmm. The other one you're stuck with. So the ether element is the space we're born in. The right. world, the family, your culture, the universe, you know? There's nothing you can do to change that. Mm -hmm. That's the ceiling of your life. Hmm. Under that, we have the air element, which is the Lajitati of Ashtas, which means in this room... I can change certain things. Right, right. And under that, you have the fire element, mm -hmm. and then you have the water and the earth element. Okay. Those are fixed. But on top of it is the air element, right? Right. So if you work with the air element, the only thing you can change, everything underneath gets better. Mm, and, got it. and so the only thing we can change is the Lajitati of Ashtas. We cannot change a single other thing. So the only remedies that are valid are the ones based on the Lajitani of Ashta. Mm -hmm. Doing a remedy because the plants in any other of Ashta won't do anything. Okay. So we need to actually prescribe our remedies based on Lajitani of Oh, wow. That's in my cool. opinion. So with every remedy I do now, mm. I always say, okay, focus on the Lajitani of mm -hmm. That's going to show me the remedy they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the only avashtas that are commonly known are the deep tadi avashtas. Mm -hmm. And most people don't even use those. But, you know, even the Prajna books have those. But see, the avashtas are they're the heart of Parashara system astrology. Mm -hmm. they, they really, really are. And if a person's not using the avashtas, especially the Lajitati avashtas, they're not doing Parashara astrology, not really. Yes, you're right. And the Vashtas are everything in astrology. And I don't know, I can't even imagine doing it. I taught astrology for 15 years. And then finally, I figured out how to really work with these Vashtas on a very basic level, just on one of the levels I mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. I taught that class. I had several people who'd been studying astrology for 20 plus years, some of them. And they, they said the very same thing. They said, the Laji Tati Vashtas are the missing link in astrology that I've always been looking for. Okay. So they're, they're really, oh yeah, and I was going to say, yeah. there's only a few, Brihat Prasha has them, Baba Kutahalam has them, okay. and I can't think of any other classical textbook that has these Avashtas. Hmm. Yet, there's nothing else like them. And um, it's, a, it's a sad thing that no one uses them. I'm the only one who's been teaching them, and I recommend everyone learn them. I'm going to do two more. I have two courses on Avashtas, Lajitadis now. Okay. And I'll be doing two more. Mm -hmm. And one of the courses is like 90 videos long. It's oh. like, the, it's all you need is Avashtas. If you learn your Avashtas well, you can do lots, so many things with astrology and you can go deep. So what I find when people try to do readings, mm. the reason they're not successful is one of two reasons. They can't make a lot of correct predictions mm. or they can't go deep into the person. Right. If, if we can do one of those, we don't have to do any advertising. They'll tell their friends. Absolutely. You have to be really good at making predictions. 
Mm. Or we have to go deep into the person. Mm. With Lao Chaitanya Vashtas, you can go so deep and so easily, you know? And you can use them without the software. All you need to see is the aspects, you know, right. the aspect calculations from zero to 60, which right. all softwares have. They're so easy. You can do some fancier things with the calculations I have in the software, but you can just do it just like that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're very simple. It's more about understanding this, the, the, what, what they really mean and represent. But, oh, I guess I should mention, they're simply based on the natural relationships of the planets mostly. Okay. So it's not so important that Saturn, Saturn, what's more important is who is Saturn an enemy to who is Saturn a friend to that's the most important thing right. so, so important things to 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 use wow. the Vashta will let you know the Vashta simply means the condition right so right. if somebody has some say somebody has Venus is giving them getting them married hmm. well what's the condition of the marriage right is it a shitty marriage or is it a good marriage, marriage. Laji Tadi Vashta is what shows you that mm-hmm and how and about that, it's the charts that people you can, keep ta talking about divisional charts so much? How, how accurate is D60, you know? Do you think uh, the... Yeah, the, 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 Vargas, yeah. the Vargas are super important, okay? Yes. okay. However, I mean, if, we're, if we were really doing precisely scientific astrology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we would need all the Vargas correct, mm -hmm. which means we need exact time of birth. Okay. Exactly. That's what. But the truth is, we're doing such sloppy astrology mm. that our intuition has to make up for at least 50% of the problems. Okay. Right. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, think about it. I have twins. Mm. They're, they're going to turn 18 soon. They're born one minute apart. Uh -huh. I, have, I have their time exactly to the second, both of them. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now they're like 59 seconds apart. Okay. Now there's only been twice in their entire lives that the same thing happened to them. Mm -hmm. okay. Other than Christmas happens every year the same day, okay? Right. Can you imagine that? Twice. They dress different, they're into different things. Mm -hmm. You know, that one of them's heavier than the other one, one of them's taller than the other one. Mm -hmm. The only way you can tell that is by the Vargas. One of them got stuck in the hospital for 11 days because she was smaller. Mm -hmm. How did I predict when she was going to get out of the hospital? With the D60, the Shashtiamsha. Mm. I predicted she'd be back on the 11th day. And the 11th day, they called and said, you can pick her up today. So the truth is, when you look at a chart, if you're not using all the Vargas mm -hmm. and you're doing from someone just using the Rashi and the Vamsha mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that means you're doing a reading for every baby born within 13 um, let's see about 13 minutes of each other yeah. okay mm -hmm. now babies can be born one minute apart and have completely different lives though mm. and we're not even we're not even taking into account that so we're really doing slovenly astrology but mm. because when we're looking at that person, even though there's another person here born six minutes later with the same Navamsha and da da da, mm -hmm. we're looking at this person. So we're focusing on their energy, and their energy is communicating to our energy. Mm -hmm. And that makes us notice things in the chart that we wouldn't notice with the person six minutes later because their energy would be relating to our energy. So we would more notice certain things in the chart. That's the only reason. We can be such bad astrologers and do anything useful, okay? Usually D60 will not be correct. Exactly. And ideally, you don't just want the D60 Lagna correct. You want all 12 Bava cusps correct. Mm, exactly. So every eight seconds, mm, mm. in some Varga, mm -hmm. two Bava, actually every four seconds, mm -hmm. in some Varga, Mm -hmm. uh, one Baba cusp will change. Right. Which means two Baba cusp will change, okay? Because they always change. Mm -hmm. Because the Baba cusp aren't exactly 30 degrees from each other. Mm -hmm. If we use the Baba Chalita, okay? Mm -hmm. So when those house cusps change mm -hmm. in one Varga to the other, that Varga gives a completely different life, a shockingly different life. Mm 
Hmm. And I've looked at my twins, and they, like their D20, the Vargas, they have a couple of Bavas different, shockingly different lives as a result. So I really, the, the difference that these subtle, these little things make is shocking, and we don't realize it. Hmm. But our intuition, we're focusing on that person, we're connecting energetically with that person, helps us make up for that. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if we want to do truly scientific astrology, which is the only kind we can teach, mm -hmm. then we, yes, Vargas are important, but they need to be used correctly and not overused, but not underused. And right now, before really the 90s, Vargas were really not used hardly by anybody. Yeah. Um, the Navamsha was used, but a lot of people did. And I have so many relatives from India in, in Jaipur in Rajasthan area. And when these people brought their handwritten horoscopes from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, mm. wow, <laughs> they only had Rashi and Chandra Lagna. Mm -hmm. They didn't even have the Navamsha on it. No. And so these astrologers, so many astrologers just use Rashi and Chandra Lagna. It's just so basic. Yes. And, um, and so the point I'm making is if you're good at that, you'll do a good job with just those two. Yeah. But the point I'm making is now there's been this explosion of Vargas. <laughs> but the truth is we're learning how to use the Vargas most correctly because there's not a lot of guidance in the old books. The old books just say the fifth Septumsha of Aries makes you like this. And you're yeah. like, nope, doesn't seem to work. You know, yeah. Techniques, we don't have any. Right. Because uh, being a student of Dr. K. N. Rao, uh, it was not there in uh, nine, till 1991, I remember. It wasn't there. And yeah. uh, like, obviously, I, I also have a you know, handmade chart by my priest, you know, the, the family priest he used to make, he used to draw. And of course, the same thing, you know, the Lagna Rashi and the Chandra Rashi, that's it. Most people can get away without it. And see, if we, with our intuition, we can get away for it. But if we were truly doing it on a scientific level, we would have to use the D60 all the time mm -hmm. because we wouldn't be able to be sure of anything that we've seen all in the other Vargas until we also examine D60. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if D60 is not correct, that wouldn't work. So we'd have to rectify the D60 first, make sure it's correct based on life events, mm -hmm. and then we can use it. But luckily, we do have our capacity to read the person energetically and our intuition Exactly. Because that saves us so much work, and that's it's completely acceptable to do it that way. Hmm. But you know, but it does work down to a scientific level to where yes, a few seconds of difference, and you're a completely different person. One minute, night and day person, hmm. different person. Correct, I agree. So, so but yeah, so we're learning to use Vargas, and we're going to find people developing better techniques mm -hmm. over the next century on how to use Vargas, and a lot of the things that were used by in Vargas will go, oh, actually that's not the right way to use it. Mm. Because there's a lot of ways we've tried that really haven't panned out. So Vargas are a big area of research now because they've only been sort of common since, like you said, the 90s when Ken Rao was one of the big people who started really pushing Vargas. Because mm -hmm. he was much more scientifically minded. He would actually statistically test things on many, many charts. Mm. Not I mean, a lot of people did that. No, not many, not many, really. Yeah. But now I think it has become, I will not say it, it's like a marketing gimmick or something, but too much of publicity and uh, not using them correctly, I feel. That's something which yeah, is... Yeah, we need to do a lot more work. A lot of exciting projects. Me and Levi hmm. are doing some really neat things. Levi is spending a lot of time on Vargas, really developing some great Vargas stuff. I look forward to that. <laughs> I look forward to Oh, yeah, that. we'll be talking a lot more about those in the future, but... Um, I'm working on a Dasha technique that really relies heavily on the D60 and all the Vargas. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, it's been pretty fun. I've, yeah, it's, you know, again, but we don't have to go to that level to help someone all the time. And we have to remember it's, we're here to support and help people's lives get better. Exactly. Uh, exactly. There's That's so many ways to do that, but we don't need to know all the ways. <laughs> no need to also, I think. And it's, uh, it's okay if you are trying to help somebody with that intention and you are able to, I think it comes from there, you know, whatever yeah, you want to yeah. convey, you, it's not, it's not me who's conveying. Obviously I never think like that. I know he is the one who wants to, uh, one time I'll see one thing and the next time it will be vanished. You know, I'll be seeing something else. 
yeah. completely yeah. a different perspective to the chart. And what about nakshatras then? You know, you're talking about divisional charts now that we are uh, into it. So what yeah. it's too much of- Well, nakshatras, yes. nakshatras is the new fad right now in Vedic yeah. astrology. Hmm. And I think that for my, and I don't, I'm not being critical here or anything like that. I'm not trying to criticize anyone, but what I've noticed is the people who get heavily into nakshatras are very intuitive people. Okay. And so they want to work with something that's not, that their intuition has a lot of room to play with. Okay. So they're actually, what I found is a lot of people who are heavily using nakshatras are working more on a psychic level than an actual astrological level. And that's okay. I mean, that's wonderful as long as they get the results. But I, what I see happening right now, and it's really been the last five years, hmm. nakshatras have become the fad of Vedic astrology. And my feeling is that a lot of things being done with nakshatras are not going to be, be proven effective in the long run because a lot of people are going to try to use those same techniques and have no success because they don't have this psychic or intuitive ability to make up for all the looseness of how we're dealing with nakshatras. There are so many problems with nakshatras just on an astronomical level. Hmm. I can talk about that for days and we wouldn't get anywhere on the solutions. Now, nakshatras are no doubt very useful and very important, but again, whenever I see something being overused, again, this, it's an experimentation phase. We need to experiment more with nakshatras. Hmm. We're gonna, out of one, one out of 10 things people try to teach and do is going to prove effective over time. Right. See, what happens is individuals show up and they say, oh, this is how I use the nakshatras. It works for me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean shit. Right. It doesn't mean anything until the collective mm -hmm. works it and decides to keep it or not. And we're going to find a lot of the things that the collective is not going to pass the collective scrutiny because they don't have the thing that allowed that one individual to use it. And that's always the case with something like this. And I've done a lot of this too. I created a lot of things, done a lot of things, but not all of them are going to pass the collective test. Mm -hmm. And that's just the nature of anyone who does some, anything that's new. We have to wait and see. But I, I already know, because I, I just have a good ability to, under, to judge the effectiveness of things, that a lot of the things we see in nakshatras, people are not going to be able to duplicate. They're not going to be able to use again. So they're not going to pass. They're not going to be teachable. Hmm. And, you know, but I think we, we need to spend a lot of more time on nakshatras, that they are a very valuable part of astrology. Um, but the, the thing... My only complaint, my only criticism towards the emphasis on nakshatras you find in Vedic astrology these days hmm. is that they're missing the foundation of it all, which is the Rashis. Simply put, Rashis are more important than nakshatras. That's why Jaini Sutras is based on Rashis. Yes. That's why Lajitadi Avashtas are based on Rashis. Hmm. You are going to be so limited if you do not learn your Rashis. And know how you know the help know the correct techniques for Rashis. You'll be so limited in what you can do. So I don't think I think we need to develop nakshatras, use them, work with them. But I would never replace Rashis with nakshatras. Just wouldn't do it. Okay. So nakshatras have a very rich tradition that we've sort of has been neglected, just like Lajitanya Vashtas and everything. Okay, and you know, there's two schools of nakshatras, the 27 and 28 school, and they both have their own branch of techniques. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the place to start with nakshatras, one of the places with, with the 28 school is the Savartha Bhadra chakra. Right. And if a person studies that chakra with an open mind, they're going to realize how much work needs to be done with nakshatras still. Okay. Absolutely. And, um, and then, of course, the other place where nakshatras become extremely important is in dasha calculations, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the two traditions we have, really. And then we have the Mahurta, the, um, 
the chakras, most chakras are 28, but some chakras are 27 nakshatras mm -hmm. and the nakshatra dashas. Mm -hmm. And um, and that we need to we need to study those things carefully to build the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then we need to resurrect a lot of the myths about the nakshatras, like who the hair, hell are some of these deities, you know? <laughs> we really have to understand them. And that's why I translated that Tatria Brahmanya book, because okay. that has the most um, foundational parts of the nakshatras that we have, that we have to build on. Mm -hmm. And those are the foundations to build a wonderful science, but the it is a- What did you say? Oh, there's the book, the um, Titeria Brahmana. I'm probably translating it terribly. Okay. Um, if you go to astrologyvideos.com, there's a link on the top of the page. You can get download that for free. Oh, my next question is about Nadi astrology. People. Yeah. Nadi yeah. So Nadi astrology, astrology has yeah. always been this thing hovering around the edges. You know, it's like that mystique, the Nadi astrology. You know, it's there's more mystique revolving around Nadi astrology than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's a lot of neat things in so-called Nadi astrology, and I just, my main thing is I don't really understand why it's called that, because every, all of astrology is essentially Nadi astrology, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's these techniques, they say this is from this Nadi, and I think a Nadi is, again, just another system. Right. Um, and now we shouldn't think it's any different than any other system. Exactly. And there's different types of Nadi, you know, there's the Nadi Yamshas, which is really the official Nadi that uses the 150th division of a sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's the, the Nadi leaves, and then there's the Brigu Nadi, and then there's the Chandra Nadi, and there's mm -hmm. just a few of these Nadis. And these are just different schools of Vedic astrology, different systems. Mm -hmm. Now, my problem with these systems is that they come to us in very fragmented forms. This person knows this naughty technique. This person knows this naughty technique. This person need, knows this naughty technique, right? Mm -hmm. Well, where's the whole system? You, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yes. And so what naughty means to me, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this, mm -hmm. unless this little thing will do this. Uh, I need something else to do this. Mm -hmm. Whereas I prefer to have a foundation in a system of astrology, like Jaimini system. Right. And then the Parashara system with the Avashtas. Hmm. Then we have two foundations. Now those won't do everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're, at some point you'll be struggling. So right. then you go, okay, I want to do this. What's, hmm. What can I use? What, what can I do that? What will help me do that better? Hmm. Oh, look, that naughty technique fits my need perfectly, you know? Right. So, Nadi is not, it's not existing in a state where we can just say, I'm a Nadi astrologer and handle everything, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a bunch of scattered stuff all over the place, you know? And that's nice, it is being collected and, and coming together, <laughs> and so hopefully one day we'll have a book of 101 Nadi techniques that work, you know? And we'll have the new age, you know, the new world order of Nadi book, you know? Yeah. Um, but people shouldn't think that because it has this naughty attached, it's better or worse. It depends. Some naughty techniques will work better than your Vimshatri Dasha. Mm -hmm. Other ones won't. The technique you told me about today sounds really, really wonderful. So I'm going to play with that. Mm -hmm. But I can see that working better to predict things than a lot of stuff we use. There's only two kinds of astrology. Yes. The ones that actually work and the ones that people think work. And you'd be shocked to know that a lot of the techniques that people use statistically only work four out of 10 times. Absolutely. I agree. That's why Ken Rao said, if it works on six charts out of 10, it's a good technique. And you're like, six out of 10, I won't touch it. Well, he says that because most things are four out of 10. I mean, he knows that. Most people don't realize it's that bad. So if you get a technique that works six out of 10, and you have a few of those techniques, and you use your perception and intuition, you can hit 80% mm. predictions, okay? Which is realistically as high as you can expect because there's always the things that 75% of life is astrologically indicated. Mm. So in theory, you only can get 75%. Mm. 
Sure. Because then there's a 25% that's not astrologically indicated. So it's impossible to predict 100%. It's because 25% is not in the chart. Mm -hmm. However, most people follow blindly, so you can guess at that 25% based on what they've done, which means if a person does not work on their Laji Tadi Abhashtas, you can predict 100% because they're going to follow the bad habits of those Laji Tadi Abhashtas mm -hmm. and train wreck their lives over and over again in this very same way. Yeah. Over time, it gets filtered out. You know, we had a, a boon. And we had a big boom of Vedic astrology where hmm. for the last 10 years, there was this idea that going to a Vedic astrologer was going to change your life. <laughs> so people were running in droves. Yeah. And then they realized, wait a minute, it didn't really change my entire life. Hmm. And the reason was because the only thing you can change is Lajitani Bhashtas. You can get a prediction. Hmm. You can get a remedy. But to truly change your life, it didn't happen to enough people. As a result, most people, it chilled out. And a lot of people had very busy businesses a year ago started having a hard time. Right. Only the people who were really in, doing it well mm. were still making a good living. So we're in this place right now where the Vedic astrologers who aren't cutting it, which means they can't consistently make predictions mm. or they can't go deep into the person are going to have to get new jobs in the next few years, you know? Right. Hmm. Um, and we, you know, we need to remember that when someone asks me when I'm going to get married, I'll say, I can tell you when you're going to get married. Hmm. But you know what? There's no point in you knowing if you're just going to mess it up the same way you did your last marriage. Absolutely. So after I tell you when you're going to get married, hmm. we have to spend an hour to three hours talking about how to not screw it up again. You know? Right. Wow. <laughs> you know, because we have to approach them on both levels. Mm. See, in the old days, people had real problems, meaning they had a problem of finding someone that they could marry so they don't starve. Mm. You know, they had to get a job so they don't starve. They had real problems. People these days don't have real problems. Mm. Predictions only solve real problems. You mm. have to find a way to not starve for six months until you get married, okay? And then you all get start. Okay, so they're like, okay, for six months, I just have to find a way to not starve. I can fast for six months, no problem. But these days, that doesn't matter because people's problems are of a mental and emotional order. Yes. So you can make the perfect prediction, but they're suffering from emotional disorders. And they'll ask you that a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later to check again. Hmm, right. You know? right. So what we need to do with these people, we can make the predictions, but what they need hmm. is they need their issues addressed so yeah. they don't feel they have to ask an astrologer every week the same question. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people don't have real problems. Most people, some people do still, but in the Western world, people do not have real problems. Hmm. Their problems are in their heads and their emotions. And so we're not going to help them if we don't approach astrology on that level. Some people take a lot of pride in making a prediction. Mm. So there's two types of astrologers. There's the predictors and there's the healers. If I'm telling you the future, look, I, I'm going to make it correct. What a great astrologer I am. And then the person's on antidepressants for the next three years. That happens. I've seen that happen. Mm. So we have to remember that we have to be there for their health in this day and age. And people who take pride in making predictions, and it's about being seen as a good predictor inside of the person's health, they have to make sure their clients are mentally healthy enough, emotionally well off enough, that they can just make a prediction without ruining their lives. True. We have to study all that, obviously. Yeah. See, we need to be aware of that or screen the client say, look, I predict. I'm blunt. I'm ruthless. Um, if I think your husband's going to die tomorrow, I'm going to say it and I'm not going to care. So if you can't handle that, go to someone else, you know. Yeah. Ernst, I'm very famous for this, you know that? People, yeah. people say you're so blunt. <laughs> I'm that's very fine, famous. as long as people know that, you know. Yeah. No, they, obviously we are, we are, like, if we are not, if we are hiding the facts and somebody is coming to know the facts, so it's cheating straight away. And the thing is, though, people don't usually know why they're coming. We have to remind them why they're coming. Exactly. You know, when someone says, when am I going to make it married? I say, do you really want to know? I might say never. 
Do you want to know that possibly never? Or do you want to know what you can do to increase your chances mm -hmm. to find the right guy starting today? Yes. See, see when people come and say, when am I going to get married? Mm. They're not, they don't, what they're asking is, mm. I don't feel there's a chance in hell I can get married. Is there a chance in hell I can get married? And I really, really need to get married. Mm. So they're not asking, what they're asking is not always what they're asking. Sure, some people just come in, they just want to know the date. Mm. But it's our job to see is what they're asking really what, they, what they're asking. Mm. You know what I mean? Exactly. See, people ask in hope. See, when people come and say, when am I going to get married? Mm. What they're asking, what they're saying is, I'm, I hope I'm going to have a good relationship one day. Yes. But they're probably not because they probably have things in their chart that have made their relationship life not work. And that's why they're asking. So we need to address those things so that they can actually have a real hope. True. Otherwise, we can just devastate them. Oh, I mean, if a girl comes and says, am I, when are I going to meet? a guy I can marry, if I say six months in a day, she has a breakdown, you know? Yeah. It has to be six months or less, you know? Yeah. But is there a good chance it's four, five, six, seven, eight years? Mm. And they're just like, they don't feel like they could survive six, seven, even one year without the right guy. So what they need, they need to get in touch with themselves on a psychological level so they can survive one, two, three, six, seven, eight, ten years as a happy single person if necessary. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And only when they can do that can they get married and not make their husband miserable and ruin their, <laughs> ruin their marriage. Exactly, exactly. No, so we need to help them have better relationships, which means help them have a better relationship with themselves. And then when we predict it, they, won't they have a better chance not mucking it up. The most are men want to know about money, right. women want to know about love. Those are the two most common things. It's like when they have families, I do understand, you know, when they have families, especially back there in India, though the clients are all over the world, but you know, they are asking me, what you just said, absolutely these kind of questions only we get. So they definitely want that security. They feel secured, you know, when they India, it's different. When, yeah, in they, India, India is totally different. You know, they want to know, okay, what yeah. are, for, uh, you know, for the family, we are earning yes. the bread. And it's about the family. It's about the, it's, it's, it's about real problems. Real in problems. That is the real problem. Yes. And see, in, in, in that, in, when it comes to real problems, predictions, that's all you do. Yes. But the rest of the world, it's about their tumultuous inner life. See, India is still in, it is still in a much more conservative way of being, where have the family, have the kids, fulfill your responsibility. But that's breaking apart. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need more and more of the other type of astrology mm -hmm. over the next, it's already increased. I remember the first time someone came from India, mm -hmm. I was so shocked. He was a young guy. He wanted to be an actor. And this actually happened 20 years ago. And I was like shocked. I was like, wow, I never thought I'd see this from India. He came and he sat down. I was actually in India. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, tell me everything I can know, anything you can tell me about myself. I want to know all about myself. And I was like, what? I was like, almost fell off my chair because I, I never heard that in India. India is like, when am I going to get money? When's he going to get a job? When's he going to get married? It's like, if, if we fill those, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. But the problem is those aren't going to work in India anymore. Mm -hmm. It all started when India became a nuclear power. Mm -hmm. See, when, a, when a country becomes a nuclear power, mm -hmm. that shows the, the collective of that culture is going to start dealing with the inner life more because they've split the atom. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. That's and, so, so nicely put, actually. Yeah. And so in America, this happened, you know, so much in the 30s and 40s. This type of astrology started taking off of dealing with the inner side. And now in, a, in the Western, in America, most astrology is all about you and what's going on inside of you. Sadly, they don't have techniques that even compare to what the Vedic astrology can do on a psychological level. But um, so India will need more of that. And you're going to see more. I mean, I see it all the time. I, I, I see a lot of most Indians I see now are dealing with these kind of problems. It's, it's not about I need my you know, my family and my job and my wife, they got all those and they're trying not to suicide, you know? Yeah, exactly. No, but do you think uh, the economy is going to pick up sometime in future, near future? No, I don't think so. I, I think 
the economy is going to get worse um, over the next year. Um, I don't see any light right this year. And I think the eclipse, um, the next eclipse, I don't expect to be great for the economy. People will think it's going to be better, but it's a deceptive eclipse. That's in June. And then the December eclipse is, um, is a bad one. It's bad for world commerce. So yeah. I think that real, you know, it's going to go down. Yeah. Um, the economy is going to suffer. And I think there'll be optimism next month, mm -hmm. but I think it'll be, people will be overly optimistic next month and over the next couple of months. And then they'll really find out in December how bad it is. I know. I know. Let's okay. hope for this. It was lovely talking to you. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.